our next guest couldn't quite decide whether she wanted to be uh, an actress or a vet. So first she tried acting, quickly finding fame in the hit TV show The Champions. Do you remember? Each week they used to use their superpowers to fight the world of international espionage. Then, after many successful stage and screen appearances, she turned her attention to caring for animals. And now, with a book full of pet recipes and tips to help your dog stay fit and healthy, please would you welcome the pet's champion, Alexandra Bastido. <laughs> Now, I, I have to take the mickey a little bit, Alexandra. You, you, you know, a recipe book for dogs. Well, well, you know, dogs eat leftovers, they eat dog meat, they eat the odd biscuits and chocolate drop, don't they? Well, they do, and I have to say circumstances alter cases, because when I'm on holiday and the starving strays around, I feed them whatever I can lay my hands on. So, uh, uh, as I said, circumstances. But if you have a pet dog that is a member of your household and you want it to be fit and well and live a long life, then um, that's different. And so so uh, what, what sort of stuff do you, do you feed your dogs? Well, predominantly organic. And uh, I have very, I'm very uh, interested the way that things have gone with human food because we all have been told to look at the small print. And I say with dog food, please look at the small print because recently I got quite annoyed. I was behind somebody in the checkout at a supermarket and this lady had a tin of dog food and it said, chunks in meaty gravy. And I said, do you know what's in that tin? And she said, no. So I said, well, look at it. So she looked at it, and it said 4% animal derivatives. And, I mean, so you that, don't know what, that, the rest you, you don't know know what, what you're feeding your dog, see, basically. But, you quite but on the other hand, you know, most of us can't afford to eat organically ourselves. So, so how on earth can we afford to, to feed our pets organically? Well, even if you're not feeding organically, and as I have my reasons for wanting to do that, uh, because at the time when the BSE thing started, that food was also going into poultry, and um, I had chickens that were falling about, and um, I will never know whether that was BSE or not. But since then, I have decided that I want to know what I'm feeding my animals, and if I'm feeding them organically, then I know what I'm feeding. So expensive but worth it? I think so. And the other thing is that if you consider that most of the time the food that you're buying in tins is 4%, that's a very expensive way of buying, say, chicken or lamb. And if you actually were to go out and buy the ingredients and cook en masse and freeze, uh, it would be a much more economical way of doing things. Do you know, I had to, I had to smile. One, one of the, the, the lovely recipes in the book, I think it's called Rufus's Roast. And, I, and, and I, I was got, it's got steak in it, it's got all kinds of lo lovely well, things. Well, humans in it. can eat these. I, well, think. <laughs> I, I think you'd have to stop humans from, eat it, from eating this one. They'd be pushing the dog away from the bowl. But this one, I thought, you know, dogs have a tendency to bag, bag breath anyway, don't they? And this one's got garlic in it. Can you imagine? Dog no, recipe if, with, again, with if, garlic you're, in it. if you're feeding your dog incorrectly, it will have bad breath. Um, garlic Garlic has all kinds of uh, wonderful advantages. Uh, one is that uh, bugs don't like it, so fleas and things may be less, uh, more likely to bite the animal, and also worms and things like that. It's supposed to keep that under control as well. But you, you do have good, solid reasons for, for wanting to treat your animals with, with supplements, with, with, you know, to take that extra bit of TLC, don't you? Well, I do. I have 180 animals, and for me to actually be splurging out on antibiotics and steroids and that sort of thing the whole time would be very expensive. Uh, but I have to say, a friend of mine said recently that, you know, when you have that number of animals, you must expect the odd death. And until then, I was sort of taking every death as a personal defeat. And most of my animals, I have to say, my cats average about 18 now, because I've been going, doing this for 20 years. Um, and the donkeys so, are very ancient. Everything's getting pretty old. But this, this is what you think, think back. I mean, you, you, you're obviously a woman who, I, I don't know, can, can split herself easily in two, in, in that you, you had all the, the glamour. You were at Hollywood when you, when you were 16, and yet you've got this obviously very, very loving and, and, and caring side to you. But, but, but take us, take us back. But how, how did you end up in Hollywood at only 16? Well, I won a competition to find the teenage diplomat for Great Britain, and that was organised by Columbia Pictures and the Evening News, which is now the Evening Standard. And um, they picked me for some obscure reason out of 4,000 girls, and I was sent there with my mother, and I made a film, and I met all the stars of the time, which was sort of Charlton Heston and various people like that. 
And it did turn my head a bit, because when I came back, uh, my parents said, right, you're going back to school. And I said, but Columbia Pictures offered me a seven-year contract. Alfred Hitchcock wants me to do a film. And they said, no, you're going back to school. So I did go back to school. That must have been quite a... It was know, difficult. You must have been livid. Mm. I, I mean, I see their reasons, because obviously to leave a 16-year-old in California would have been total disaster, I think. But um, as it happened, I then applied for university, to Manchester University, and got in, but also got offered a part doing The Count of Monte Cristo on television. And I decided to take that. I was in such a hurry to act. And the only way I could really have animals during my acting period was to... Uh, my flat, every single room had gurgling fish tanks <laughs> because that was really the only thing I could sort of leave behind and entrust somebody to cope with. And I also started my love of Dobermans at that time because of stalkers, various problems like that. And um, I've had them ever since. And they've, they've, they've looked after you. I, I, I remember the, the, the champions with, with great affection. I used to, used to absolutely adore it. It, it, was, it, was a, it must have been a happy time for you, was it? Or was it, was it a bit scary? It was hard way? work. I mean, it, we, we did it for a, a year and three months. And, um, you know, one was up at 6 a.m. every morning, in, on the set, made up. And, and the hair took forever because it was all back combed and sort of way oh, It was up. big. It yeah, was big, big was hair huge. you had, wasn't it? Um, and so you're on the set working at 8.30 and would finish 5.30, 8.30, often work six day, a six-day week. And then when you got home, you had to wash your hair all over again. And I used to take out about 100 hairpins every night too, which is not the fashion now. Um, so I remember getting quite tired doing and, and then, it. And then it was, it was onto the stage really after that, wasn't it? I then, yes, I then... Because I sort of was discovered, so to speak, rather early on, I decided I'd better learn about acting. So I, after I did that, I went to Derby Rep and started doing proper acting. Yes. But, you, you know, the, the, the thing that really surprises me, you, you were, you know, at the height of everything, you were only 33, and you just said, I've had enough. How did that happen? Uh, I had enough because I'd done too much, really. I had an apartment in Toronto, an apartment in Spain, and one in England. and. Uh, I think it was Hemingway who said, the more homes you have, the less you feel at home. And uh, I was getting exhausted, I mean, really, and, and mentally exhausted by it too, physically. Physically, human beings, I think, really, in the long term, like repetition. And I was jetting around all over the place. So I, I really came to a point where I was you know, having a nervous crisis and um, decided then that I would come back to live properly in England. And then um, I met up with my husband, who I'd known many, many years previously, Patrick Garland. And we got married, and we, he shortly after that got the job of running the Chichester Festival Theatre. And because of that, we bought this farmhouse, arrived with two animals, and I filled it up with 180. Well, well you, 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 the picture of health, you look very happy. You obviously made the right decision. Alexandra, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. We'll be looking at the condition that makes children lose control and parents possibly lose their patience. That's attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. We'll see you then in a few minutes.